Hi, my name is Jan Jackham. I uh, was an employee at the Ellis Stromers plant in West Dallas between 1973 to 1985. And uh, my story started when I graduated early from high school and I went into Wisconsin Air National Guard as an aircraft mechanic. And that basic training and everything ended in the right around June or July. And so then uh, I was scheduled to start uh, going to school at Milwaukee Area Technical College in the fall. It was uh, on, in October, I was riding a bike, I mean riding a bike, uh, sorry. I was riding a bus, a number 18 bus, to uh, downtown to go to school. And then a number 18 bus all went past the West Ellis plant. And I, people were coming, getting off and on, uh, getting off and on the bus, talking about that they were hiring. So then I decided, so I don't really want to go to technical school. I want to work on Ellis Traumers tractors because my grandfather loved the Ellis Traumers tractors. And uh, so I got off the bus, went in there, filled out the application, and they. Um, Looked at my application, all of a sudden, some guy from the office came, come with me. You know, he took me out of the main area with all these other people to another office. They talked to me a little bit, and then he made a few calls, and he tells me, we, we want to hire you. And the same day, he gave me a little, I had to go to a hospital at the West South facility. They had a hospital in the middle of the, the plant. And then I went there and did my physical and everything and after my physical they gave me some paperwork and I had a report to the tractor line and my first job was the area before the, uh, they pushed the tractor into the washer and the paint booth they had me work there the whole rest of the day doing ma uh, maintenance or making repairs that there's something that came down the line and the inspector, inspection saw that it was missing a part. I had to go find it and install it on the tractor before they push it into the, into the paint booth, the washer and the paint booth. And then, uh, then during the course of the day, this was all one day, you know, <laughs> I started. And, uh, and then, then I was informed uh, I was supposed to report the third shift the next, the next night. And I worked on the repair floor. And, uh, and there, basically, basically, uh, and certain and tractors were inspected. If they had any leaks, any kind of issues, they would write it out on a piece of paper. And your job was to replace, replace whatever had to be be done. And uh, so I had that. Uh, I was on their shift for a while. Then all of a sudden, things changed, and uh, production changed a little bit. And they want me on first shift as a on the semi line. You started as a helper until you got enough seniority to get a position. Eventually, there was an older guy there that did instrument panels. His name was Harry. I forgot his last name, but he was, he had a tendency to fall asleep while he was making instrument panels. So they and. and and so they needed me to do part of the uh, instrument panels. And my first job was putting the instrument panels. And it's probably similar to the what's in this tractor right now. And uh, I saw the, the change from regular light bulbs to the printed circuits to the, the newer versions later on. But I was involved in wiring a lot of instrument panels. And, uh, and they had another gentleman there, all he did is the two, 200 tractors, 185, 175. My job was just doing the, the 7,000 series tractors. And it might be like 10, 10 panels a day. Plus, I might have had to load batteries. At the time, they gave you a, you work off of a time study. And uh, 
you're, you gave, they gave me a job of like on, on putting batteries in and uh, maybe installing light, light bulbs, lights on the fenders, or uh, there's like a belly pans, I had to put the belly pans on, or else the plate that's in the middle underneath the carpet. And so that was basically my job for, for many years. Plus, uh, they needed me for overtime a lot. Anything that wasn't uh, finished right, they ran out of painted parts, whatever, they, uh, they had, had me come in, maybe take off, part, stay a couple hours at night and take parts off the paint line or uh, work on a repair floor on a Saturday or at, you know on a weekend trying to catch up on the repairs on the tractors so uh, so I got to got to, uh, into a lot of areas and and being a kind of a floater I was able to pick up how to assemble most of the tractor from the when it came out of the dryer and all the way through the end of the line and uh, and as a floater sometimes you had to fill in for other you know, other people that are missing or whatever. But uh, they expect me at least build 10 panels a day to keep this old guy from falling behind. After a while, I came up with a system where I build a lot more. I, I, could, I could build uh, 10 or, or even more. And I hit them. I started hiding all my instrument panels so that this old guy didn't know that they were there. And so the guy that, when he came and asked for an instrument panel and he was behind he was hurrying up fast and fast to try to get done and secretly I would give the give the the guy an instrument panel for the line so he didn't fall behind you know we did that for quite a many years and eventually I got to cut the story short uh, I think in the 80s 82 when they start closing the foundry and uh, laying off they start bringing people in, start uh, uh, laying off people on the production line. And uh, I was uh, replaced by a lady who said, your job looks easy. My friend lost his jo uh, job. He never came back. He found another job in 84. And uh, he lost it because uh, someone with seniority bumped him off the job. But my plant manager, he... Uh, he said, come with me, and he promoted me to the next level in a different category. So I was protected from uh, layoffs. And my job basically was a repair lot, a same line repairman. And so I basically did the same thing before, you know, training assembly line people and uh, helping out on, on weekend projects or whatever. I was, made a lot of overtime, even though they, you had a, you you had to go through a, a checklist, and you know they have to ask everyone if you wanted to work. And I told the foreman, if, if no one else wanted to work, I'll work for you. So he knew that he had to go through the rigmarole of everyone asking yes, yes. Sometimes he had me just show up, just in case the guy, if the guy didn't show up for on a Saturday morning or whatever. He said, I'll find you something to do, and. Um, and, and I, and then uh, during the '84 or before the, the 70, 70 year uh, anniversary, the 8,000 series tractor and the 6,000 series tractor, I worked with engineering on, on setting them up to be uh, working on the production line, and uh, basically I, I worked with another maintenance guy, and we put it together from you know, scratch. They painted it and we kind of slowly put all the parts on all the way to the end of the line so that when the production started we could train all the production people to do their job. And uh, and it, it worked out really good. I, you know, I kind of enjoyed uh, working on the, the 8000 series, 6000, but my love was really with the 7000. I liked the 7000 the working on it and I the ins and outs and you know I always thought that was the better 
it's the good tractor. And it was a sad thing when uh, when they closed the facility and they got rid of the 8,000 and the 6,000. I thought they were really good tractors. You know, not, you know Fiat or uh, I mean uh, Deutz Ellis. They might you know, they might have been good tractors at the time, but you know I think if if the 7,000 series, if we were able to retool and and do the manufacturing, go more automation. At the time, I think we would have still be in business. When, when they sold the plant in, I think it was March of 85, they sent us a letter and everything. And uh, according to the letter, they were gonna finish the production at West Dallas. And, and there was talk that they were gonna move the facility anyways. And I know, I, I heard uh, stories that they did move all the tractors to some West Dallas, uh, uh, Waukesha plant somewhere, and he finished assembling them and uh, putting decals on them, and uh, and then that, that you know that's that's when I when when I heard about that they were going to sell. I knew reading, what writing was on the wall. Management didn't didn't want to continue in West Dallas, and basically the facility was run down. I mean, when I, my time there from 73 to 85, we made uh, th at least three major line changes. And, uh, and it's still the line was too short. And it was, you know, it needed automation. You know, like you look at the, how they put them together nowadays. And that's how the 8,000 basically was laid out. And it, it never got the chance, you know. All, if everything was tested before they uh, assembled it and shipped it. Like a, Any yeah. interesting stories or antidotes from working at the plant for 12 years? Well, I was there when uh, one, one of the mechanics went outside. For some reason, he tried to start a uh, 7580 with a screwdriver. I don't know why he didn't go in a cab. You know, they had the... At the time, it was the same key that started all the tractors, and uh, he never checked to see if it was in gear. He tried to, uh, yeah. don't do this at home, kids. Uh, you know, take a screwdriver and short out the positive to the on a, on a starter cable, cable to the the start uh, wire. Anyways, when he did that, the tractor was in gear and went through the fence and crossed 70th Street and was starting to climb a hill into the parking lot across the street. Lucky he was able to get in there and shut it down before, uh, you know, did any major damage. He did take down the fence though. That was impressive to see a fence go down. <laughs> then after that you had to start putting warning stickers on there? Yeah, all the stickers on there, on, the, on there, it's all geared towards uh, some liability issue. And a lot of times on the, your clock number you had to write on a sheet that you actually installed that uh, decal. So if someone ever sued a company because they put their hand in the fan blade, and if that decal was missing, you know, they have paperwork saying that it was put on when it left the factory. So that's that's how they say, if you decal read on her, there's a history involved. <laughs> Now you're actually featured in one of the old videos we have on our channel. There's a scene of you in there from the 80s. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, an 80, 70. Uh, I was putting a, a panel right inside there before. There, there's a, you know, I was working on a panel inside, putting, <laughs> putting a panel on, and I didn't realize that I was, my picture was taken until we're during the, uh, the COVID-19, uh, uh, being at home, I start watching old uh, Ellis Chalmers videos, and uh, and I find like J and L videos had a lot of interesting stuff that I I remember some of the stuff, you know, some of the layouts of the old tractor plants and things I can remember right where I was at, at the time, and and all of a sudden I. They have the quality quality to ship. I happen to see that video 
I said, hey, that's me in there. <laughs> I didn't realize they took a picture of me. And I, unfortunately, I had my tongue stuck out. And people always said that when I concentrate a lot, I stick my tongue out. You know, <laughs> and then they must, someone must have liked that and put that in there. But, uh, but I was working on the 8,000. Uh, I built them, uh, before they even started producing them, I was producing them on the line with the 6,000. And it was, you know, it was a lot of work and a lot of fun. And, and the tractor, you know, I, I liked the tractor, 8,000. I loved the 6,000, I always thought there was a, looked like a mini 7,000. I always loved working on that. I, I did, uh, I built that one from scratch from, came in a crate, uh, said Fiat on her. And then I, we uncrated them and they painted it. And then we put, it, put all of our sheet metal on to make it look like the way they do now. Oh, there's one time uh, when the 8000 series tractors, we were testing out uh, a new torque wrench, it's mechanic and I. And uh, the torque wrench, as soon as it, it hit the torque, because before they had a manual torque wrench to torque it, and then eventually they came with a pneumatic one, and they wanted one that, that uh, as soon as it clicked, you knew it was torqued properly. Well, this thing, as soon as it clicked, it pinned us against the tractor. Both of us, <laughs> look at the guy that I was working with was a little heavier. He was closer to the, the pinch point. But uh, yeah. they, they came out with a bar on her that, that prevented it from uh, pinching someone against the side of the tractor. But, but that's, you know, that's some of the stories. And even like the, the same 580 you see here, we had a few of them that uh, the truck drivers, they forget the overpass clearance oh, no. and they would take the cab off and uh, they would bring it back to the facility and would ask us to come, my friend and I and some other guy, uh, we had to put new cabs on it and, re and redo it, rewire it and, and do everything, just hook it up, paint it and touch up whatever. And uh, the thing with the cab guys, they had to have the cab guys come in and they would just sit there and drink coffee and laugh at us. And they said, their job was just to put the cab together. They, they weren't going to help us. And they just sat there, you know, at that comic corner. And we didn't care. We were just getting paid, uh, you know. But the first, you know, this driving one of these things on, you know, in the field that, or in a, in a lot trying to find, on the back of the tractors they put five, uh, uh, five numbers on her and, that, and we had to go, we get a ticket, you had to go find it. So you had to go out in the yard and find the tractor and bring it in. And uh, some of the tractors they had the, the wide axles. We had some mechanics that forgot about the wide axles and take out garage doors or, or get too close to some racks. But, uh, you know, it's, you know, there's, uh, there's, I'm trying to think of some other stories, but that's, that's what some of the best stories. Okay, one of the jobs that seemed like, not only I had to make 10 instrument panels a day, one job I, I always got is loading batteries. And uh, so I had a, put this, this uh, battery uh, holder on here, and then, uh, you gotta put a screwdriver and uh, and tighten these bolts, and then uh, and then hook up the batteries and the cables and everything. And uh, that was one job, and it was easy on the semi line because you didn't have the back half. It came in two sections, and and on, on the back half, every once in a while I had to put a, the fenders on or this call on. Okay, uh, one of the jobs, the instrument panels, they basically were pretty much the same uh, configuration. The only thing changes the uh, the light pattern. It, it used to have regular light bulbs, and yeah, some light bulbs were painted red. And then we went to the uh, circuit board type. And then uh, the trouble is, uh, at the time, I actually wired up uh, test a tester for it, uh, for 
and uh, one of the engineers thought that was a great idea, so he had Alan Bradley come back with one that's even more high tech. So they, we tested it. We were able to test that panel before it went on the line. Because a lot of times in the early days, we have maintenance people from the repair floor. They would come in there asking for light bulbs or, or a bad tack or whatever. And, uh, and underneath, uh, the, sometimes I had to put the carpet on. And sometimes there's a, there's a plate underneath the carpet. I had to put that plate on. And then uh, all, the, all the rubber th uh, stuff around on the, on the handles and everything I had to put on her. Some of the decals. That decal there, I put a lot of those on. Had a job. And somehow I got a job of putting the decals on the 185s, 175s, 200s on the sides. And you had to have a squeegee and soap. And, uh, and some, every once in a while I had to put the seat in. And, uh, there, and then there, the side, on the sides, we put those on it, you know. And there's a plate that's on the top. Some, it had a glue, uh, a foam on there, and it was uh, spring, these spring clips. And that's how they access the panel from, from above. Even though half the guys ended up taking the three screws off of the bottom and hanging it out because it's still hard to get your hand behind there to change anything, work right behind there. And, uh, and like all the glue, all the foam in there, everything, every once in a while the foam would come off. We used the, the 3M product on it. The, the yellow, yellow was the best. Whenever they got us the brown stuff, I don't know where they got the brown stuff from, but but that stuff, you could put it on there, and before the uh, tractor came off the line, the phone was falling off. And, uh, and another, I probably don't have the legs or the knees <laughs> to put the air behind here. You, you know, when, the line, when this was going down the line, you had to squat and work on it like this. You know, and, st and some of these these lights and, and and it's best that all these lights I had to subassemble ahead of time. And uh, most of the time, they was given a someone else's job on the line to put this on, but they never had the time. They they couldn't, uh, you know. You had to lean down and bend your knees, and then you got to walk like this and, and work at the same time. Install it. And I put, I put the, the sheet metal on already. My friend in, uh, ended up doing that job too. And, uh, and put the, the bolts, the same, same bolts that you see here, same ones that they use on the inside the cab for the floor. And then, uh, this one might be a little, okay, then I have to put, had to put the mufflers on. And that, and that, that means you had to climb up the, they had like a, a dolly. You could climb up and you just kind of get the clamp on her, get it they're just started so that you can go up there and just put it down there and zip, zip, and they're done. And that, you know, you didn't have time to put the clamp on there and put it on there and, and snug it up. And you don't want to snug it up too hard because then you can't get the muffler on. But. And then another job was uh, we had the, the charger, the, air, the AC, we charged, we had a, a machine uh, charger the AC on the line. So a lot of times I, I helped hook it up because uh, my toolbox actually was right near it. So I, I, you know, a lot of times I just hooked it up and start charging it. And another thing is, is the fuel. They had like, a, you push the button and then put so much fuel in each tractor. And if they pissed me off during the day, I hit the button twice. <laughs> but anyways, uh, and all like all the sheet metal, 
a lot of times, you know, products that came off the line, they might have had a bad day uh, painting them and they got orange peel or whatever. I would have to come in on a Saturday and, uh, and, and you know, basically take these off the line, put the decals on them, and go out there and put them on tractors that, that were missing. You know, <laughs> yep. quite a few. Very good. Well, thank you for all your hard work, you know, putting these icons together. They had a guy that, that his job was the marriage together. I, 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 I help, had to help the guy once, but I never actually did his job, but it seemed like a pretty fun job. At the time we worked there, these pins on here, you know, if, they manage, if management ever caught you with a, if you didn't have a brass hammer beating on that pin or whatever, you know, you get, either got fired or got reprimanded because it would have to distort that pin and kind of... But th there was a guy that he had to put four of these things together a day. And they say, take them all, and they came online, they had the tires on it, or he had to, he had to pull it off the line and then uh, set, it, set it on this, this table that came up and then the same thing at the back end, and then he, he would marriage them together. They call it the marriage station. And then, so four of these came down, down at a time. If if they didn't get that, if he didn't get done, then he had to take that one off the line, and he had to put it on there later on and finish it. And being a semi line repairman, my job was basically help him out, you know, finish it up, whatever and also train the people on the line. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it kept me busy uh, every day. And I loved doing that, you know, especially on a snow day. Yeah, a snow day when half the people don't show up to work. I could, I started assembling whatever crew we had. We started putting the tractors together from the end of the paint booth all the way to the end of the line. So. So uh, we never lost production. Oh, there is a one funny story that we did do that. We, you know, we we had a su uh, supervisor that that always was watching the clock. You know, it was kind of like a worry wart. So we we planned it. My whole my whole line from into the the paint the paint booth all all the way to the end of the line. We kind of got ahead and, and I kind of helped get ahead and, and getting the tractors ready to go. And we all waited. When people came in, they uh, clocked in, but they kept their, put their card back in the, the old spot. And we all waited down below the stairs. At the, there was a, uh, a stairs right by the time clock. And the, <laughs> you got real worried at the, at the as soon as the, at eight o'clock, when the line started out, he said, I had, no one showed up. All my people, they didn't show up. What am I going to do? I can't run my line and all that. And then we all, we all came up from the basement and put, put our clock cards over to the other side. And he said, you guys, you know, he goes, <laughs> that, that, was, that was really good fun. Uh, you know, I don't know if they ever remember that, but that, that guy probably... Because <laughs> I had to help uh, you know, keep, the, keep us from falling behind in production that day. We did that, but that was worth it, though. <laughs> yeah, your question. My question? Yep. You got a question? Well, I was uh, I was wondering if you would like to sign this tractor with a Sharpie since you worked on it. I could okay. Pop, I could pop the side sheet off and you could sign the inside. That way it won't get, you know, scrubbed off by the elements or anything. Okay, if you want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta get the. Uh... You know, a lot of people uh, notice some, some weird things on their tractors, like uh, signings and, and uh, marks and everything. If if uh, 
if QA uh, saw any any kind of marks like that on, on a piece of equipment, you 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 would be fired, you know, because it. But I heard that people signing the. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Hey, it is probably the cleanest. Remember your employee number? It's in the car. I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> four three nine nine four. I think it was, but I I would have to look it up. I I have my. Sh oh, can I sit down there? Yeah, you sit up there. Yeah. I use a lot of sharpies in my maintenance career. Ugh. Right, that leg. I don't know what happened. Anywhere? Yeah, anywhere is fine. Anywhere you feel is necessary. Oh, what's your job title on there, too? Yeah, put your job title. That'd work, too. It'd be like a yearbook. Yep. We'll get Larry Grunberger back here, he can sign it too. Yep. <laughs> you are left handed too. Yeah. Just like mom. Yep, my dad. Yeah, let's call us the weird one. <laughs> If you really want my clock number, I can get it. <laughs> yeah. I can do that. But yeah, if you want. But, well, there you if go. you're going to stay right here, I can go run and get it. Yep. Sure. Yep. Well, thank you. Yeah, very good. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk with us in that. Okay. And if you need any more story, I'm starting to remember things as I'm going along. <laughs> yeah. We can do a series of videos. But it's like the, the one lady I remember that taking parts off was a black lady, her name was Fanny. I don't know how I forgot her name or how I remembered it, but she, my friend and I, she kind of treated us like we were one of her kids. Would bring us cookies and all that, and we would help her take parts off the paint line. And uh, she had a, you know, you figure, uh, older lady lift, you know, lifting these off a of, uh, paint line all, every day. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah, they're not the lightest. First time I took it off my 7050, I was surprised. <laughs> yeah. 